Hello everybody. I have been wanting to do a video on the differences between certain golds when mixing it with resin. Because every single gold that you can purchase or, or mix with resin have different effects. And that was one of the things that I had a hard time discovering when I started doing resin because I thought, oh, I have gold and that it would do exactly what I wanted it to do. So today I'm going to show you um, our, I'm going to show you mica powders, our acrylic inks, um, acrylic paint or just metallic paint, metallic powders, uh, resin paste, and um, actually some spray paint. So I'll go through all of them and kind of give you a sh uh, show you exactly how these pigments interact in resin and I also have this bright pink because sometimes um, uh, I want to show you how the how those also interact with, an, with another color when we are you know working it with the resin. So I have taken a car uh, this is actually a a uh, canvas cutout and I think black would show off the gold really well so I, I gave them a black background and I'm gonna put clear resin on here and then we're gonna get to work. Okay, we are back. So starting with mica powders today, I had, you know, originally when I was looking for a bunch of colors to buy to get started in my resin, I had found some beautiful packets of mica colors. So this is the brand that's in here. So that's why I have this little packet here. And it's, it's just to show you if you wanted to look at the specs of the specs of what it is, but it's a, it's mica powder and um, it's a gold and it mixes really beautifully, I think. You can see how the shimmer is on this. beautiful effect if you look at that it has a nice little shimmer to it also I mean it is very blingy and pretty I turn the heat gun I am just blowing, gonna blow these in one direction because I'm gonna be doing stripes to kind of give you, to show you how these um, move inside the resin. And as you can see, the, this has a very glossy, it's almost sandy like appearance inside the resin. It also presents cells. So this is a, a mica powder. 
And the next mica powder I'm going to uh, show you is the, the Bling It Gold. This is super, super sparkly. And I love it, so. Use a hot peek in again. I'm going to use Interference Gold. This is also, a, this one particularly is from Color Art Bling It Pearl Gold, but it is an interference powder. So it's got a pearly color, a, a pearly sparkle to it. I really like to use this one inside, um, mixing inside other colors. So if you have like <clears throat> a green or a red um, resin or art or actually even acrylic paint or color that you really like but you want it to have a shimmer to it I will add um, one of these interference powders because um, it will automatically give it that shimmer and gold just works well in in greens and uh, basically colors that have uh, the that are travel more along the gold gold yellowy sides of the spectrum. That's why I also have violet and uh, inter interference violet, interference green, interference blue, because you can really make a beautiful set of colors with them. And I do really love the interference colors when I'm doing the, the galaxy. So the, so the powders have a completely different look when you put them in gold. They, they kind of look like sparkly sand and uh, they disperse really nicely into the resin and will um, give you some really good, you can see some here, some of the, some of these cell effects right here, some sealing. And a lot of times when, when I'm working on a color, I will kind of use this to use something to draw through it. And as you can see, these colors are a little too sandy to really give 
me any kind of I can't really move through it and make a design unless I'm really working with it. So those right there are all mica powders. And you can see they keep, the longer they sit there, they have been just going wider and wider. And of course I have been blowing it, you know, every, every single one of those lines in a certain direction. So the next one I'm going to do is acrylic ink paint. Well, it's acrylic ink drops. So it's a really, really beautiful color. And this was one of the first golds that I tried. And I was surprised when I mixed it up and it kind of ended up having, as you can see, like a more of a tan look to it. So <clears throat> let's give it a shot. This paint or ink as a gold really worked hard to kind of stay put where it, where I had landed it on there and it doesn't seem heavy at all as a matter of fact it's got a nice little shimmer to it but here's a, a good view it's very similar to the mica powders but I can see a distinct difference when I look So last on this one, on this board, is going to be acrylic paint. <clears throat> this is bright um, deco art, brilliant paint. I thought this will be the one, absolutely, when I picked it up. It's really beautiful. So I was really surprised in the end how all of these colors or all of these powders 
look surprisingly, surprisingly the same. They're excellent for mixing in with colors. Let me get the camera off here for a second so you can see. But they aren't the kind of gold you would use if you were looking or going for a marbling. But look how pretty the effects are. So this is the acrylic paint on the end here. This is the acrylic ink. This is the interference gold. The bling it. And then the mica powder. Well, they were all mica powders, but the first mica powder that I used. Okay, so now we're gonna move to more gold. And I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. And I went ahead and I mixed up the golds already. I have um, two metallic powders. And if you're curious about the difference between a mica powder and a metallic powder, it's actually um, the makeup of them. So this one has copper, zinc, and magnesium. So that's, so the entire powder itself has a completely different consistency than mica powders, which are, as you know, golden, sparkly, and blingy. So this, and you can kind of tell by how that pools in the cup that there's a, the, it's almost like it's a lot finer, you know, the powder itself. So when you put it in, it looks like paint, more like paint. You can't really see the difference in, you can't see the little granules. So I'm going to use two of these metallic powders today. I mean, this one, I got this set because it had copper and silver and, um, you know, a couple different color uh, versions of gold. And I'm using this pretty yellow one. And then, of course, you've seen me use this, and it's one of my favorites. It's it's the first one that I found, and it is also a metallic powder that is also makeup. You can see how it looks similarly in the cup. And then we're going to do some paste. So this is the Just Resin, and it's just so beautiful. I just love to look at this. Look at that. So it's Just Resin Pigment Paste. And then of course we'll do spray paint on this one as well. So let's start with the Just Resin. We will put a little bit of the pink on the end.
And next we're going to use the Miron. Hi, Cheddar. What are, you, what are you doing? I'm trying to do resin here, handsome. <laughs> Give me one second. Okay. So, this is the Miron Metallic Powder. Now I'm going to use this other metallic powder. This one's called Antique Gold. Let's see how we like it. As you can see, these uh, once they're in the resin, they're they they're thicker, they sink, and then they stay together. So they keep a you know they keep together and they make you can see the little selling effects, and then you can see how it shines on the top. So if you made the, the if you made it really thin, you could you know, I mean you could make really thin lines with it, or you can make thicker ones like these. I made them thick in this so that you can kind of see how the body of this looks. I mean, look how pretty that is. This is the paste. And then as you go look, you can see right there where the where it pools at the top and the light shines off of it. And then these two do the same thing. So really all the only difference I can see here between metallic, the metallic um, powder and the paste is really what you like working with best. I mean, the, the powder, the paste looks a little like it's a little bit thicker, but it's, but overall it's extremely beautiful as far as what type of look you're going for, as opposed to, there is nothing wrong with the, these, but these I would put more in the body of, of, a, of the color, like a background or something I wanted to make shimmer. So totally different look. So now we're going to do the, um, sorry, now we're going to do our um, spray paint. And I'm going to put on my mask and I'm going to show you <laughs> how to do it because it's pretty stinky. 
but um, of course you shake it up really well. I get the mirror effects if I ever if I'm ever going to use these because of of how it looks. But you one thing to remember when you're looking at um, spray paint is not to get anything with primer mixed in with it because that's a standard. You will see a ton of different kinds of spray paint that have other ingredients inside them. So it's got to just be paint. Um, I've tried, I tried the other one just to see, and it made this big oily mess. It was like putting silicone oil into it, but I, I don't know if what, what was in it, but that's what it looked like. So I'm going to put on my mask and I'm going to stir this up so you can see how I do it. I use a paper cup because it just doesn't work when you try to use a plastic one. Okay, it actually to me smells a lot like nail polish. And it actually goes right in the resin in the same exact way that those metallic powders do. You see a couple little spots here where it splattered when I sprayed it into the cup, which I kind of knew was going to happen, but I kind of still wanted to show you anyway how how to mix it in there. You, you can go do a lot of different things with coloring resin. And um, I'm putting the four on this on this block that have a very specific look to them when it comes to gold and this one like you like i was going to show you you can actually pull a design out of it if you wanted i'm going to turn on the heat gun and let me grab some pink first Actually, you don't have to use the heat gun if you don't want. Some people just like the look of the streaked in gold. Just you know, putting a streak across it. Or splatters. I always think of molten gold when I look at these. So this is the paste. And this one is the are these two are the metallic powders. And this last one. 
is the spray paint. A huge difference from here from these mica powders to the spray paint and the metallic powder. So next I will be working on um, gilding flakes and alcohol ink. We're gonna start with some double-sided tape. And you've probably seen me do this with gilding flakes. I, I know I've done it a lot, but I don't on my actual channel. I don't think I've done. I don't. I think I've only done it once. But this is definitely a precise way of doing the gilding flakes. I actually have these out because they have such big flakes in them, so it makes it just easier, well, it makes it easier for me to just coat the tape down. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing in regular time. And now I'm going to take a brush. And of course, this is messy. So I'm going to wipe it off. And I usually do salvage whatever um, gilding flakes land on my station. So, or the big ones anyway. super pretty. I like how this looks. It's very precise. And the next way, and I and I've done it, I've done building flakes with precision glue. It's a I use this glue um, more often than not because it is it dries tacky. So it lets you precisely draw whatever it is you would like to draw and then um, you put the you have to dry it and when it dries it's clear and uh, then you put your you, you put the gilding flakes on top of this ta the on top of the tacky dry what's dry so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, draw something out and dry it with a hair dryer and I'll be back This glue is very precise and you have to completely dry it. If you don't dry it, it will actually have little, it'll be gloppy where you can see, you know, where you can see where it didn't dry. But, and then of course I kind of blubbed up the, a little bit, but this gives you a really good idea. So, um, you don't have to use a hair dryer to dry it. You can just put it on and leave and come back later. I used this type of glue and gilding flakes on this um, on my gilded spider webs. So I really love how precise you can make the curly cues or the or the web.
Now I'm going to go ahead and coat this with resin. So now I'm going to take some metallic powder and tip, this is what you typically see me or how you typically see me use the um, uh, gilding flakes. I like to do a layer and then on the next layer put a little bit, you know, put, put some more gilding flakes out on the top so that when you look into the coaster you can see a, uh, a, th a really nice 3D effect. This is the metallic powder. This is the one I'm using right now. Typically, I will do my streak across. Meow. Cheddar says hi. Meow. And I'm going to take the heat gun. I'm going to point it straight down instead of blowing it too far. And then I lay on my flakes. Now I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do as detailed as I normally do just for the, to get the point <laughs> by, by watching the video. Um, but typically what I do is I put a little dot inside, um, pick my daughter, and I poke a little bit of resin on the tip and it helps me just grab the flakes. You could be as detailed as you want with them, making them tiny. And then once they're on there, you can go through and, and put them in a shape that you would like if you want to submerge them more into the gold or or just add and keep adding more until you like the way it looks. But gilding flakes are a lot of fun. And normally when I put them on like this, I am expecting to do a second coat on top, a second coat of resin on top the next day because these will sand off. Not completely, but but if I were to try and sand this, you know, smooth it down without putting a clear coat on top it would definitely grind little holes in inside the the flakes themselves so the next thing i'm going to show you is alcohol ink gold now i'm actually i, I don't use a whole lot of um, gold or metallic alcohol inks but this is still a fun i mean they're still fun and beautiful and since we're doing gold i'm going to show you You'll notice that as you keep going, because this is really, really pretty, uh, the way it hold, gets the light, it they keep expanding. So we started little, and they got bigger. 
and they just spread out. But it's super fun to use alcohol inks, and of course you can mix them, mix them into resin before you put them on the in the before you put them in. But you can see that you have a little bit. of a similar look that the, the metallic powders have. But alcohol definitely has a mind of its own when it comes to working in resin. So if you were to pour a little bit of resin in a cup, add some alcohol gold. It has a completely different look. And it's beautiful too. It's like a pearly gold. You have to be really careful with a torch around alcohol ink. Most of the time, once it's submerged inside your resin, it's it won't catch on fire. But that's most of the time, and you have to be really careful and, and con you know, make a conscious choice to keep the flames away from alcohol, <laughs> alcohol ink. So it's a really beautiful, a really beautiful effect. And the last thing I wanted to show you uh, for gold is an um, interesting um, way to do metallic powder. And it's not something that, I mean, it it's very, it actually looks very similar to this, but, it ha but um, you want to be careful with how much you put on there. So what I typically will do is I'll submerge my stick and then I'll shake it onto. It has a really neat look. It's also something that you, that you can kind of manipulate around if you want. Make swirling designs and patterns in. So that is it. I wanted to show you a bunch of different ways to use gold and resin because it was actually quite a challenge for me in the beginning to figure out what how to find a gold that did what I want it to do. And I also learned along the way some beautiful ways to use gold. So that's this, I splattered metallic, uh, metallic powder on the ends there. So it's not, it is not mica, it's the metallic. And this is in the center here, that's the alcohol. And then of course the gilding flakes. And I use that same metallic powder on the gilding plate or to do, put the gilding flakes in. And then of course, the glue and the score tape. We are back after letting these boards set out overnight so that I could show you how they cured. Our first board was the micas, the powders, and then the acrylic ink and paint were the last two on this board. They actually have such a gorgeous shimmer to them. You can see 
But one thing you will notice is how these continued after after we were finished, you can see how they continue to disperse out into the resin. So th while these are extremely beautiful, I, you don't really have a whole lot of control over where and how the color is unless you're going to be mixing it. This is a, this coaster is a good example of, of how I use gold and uh, this type of gold and mica. It was basically used to add shimmer into the design but not have an expectation that this gold would be, you know, standing out as one of the main pieces of the coaster itself. I've also used these in, um, these mica powders in trays and the gorgeousness of how these powders accent makes this one look like it's on fire. It's so pretty. So, and this actually, the gold on this is the same exact gold that I used in this video. Our next tray was the metallic powders and the spray paint. And these are the ones that I think are so beautiful. When they hit the light, you can actually see certain parts of it come shining up to the top and then sometimes it looks like a color shift the way the gold does and you can see it actually looks like lace so you get a good view of it there we go you can see that so pretty so we had started with the paste the just resin paste you can see how the gold pools up at the top. And then these two were the metallic powders and those particularly kind of make a lacy effect, which are really, really beautiful. And then we have the spray paint. Now, normally the spray paint does a really similar effect and I'm not really seeing it on this board, but I do have a coaster to show you. You can kind of see it here same exact spray paint so i have a feeling that when i did this last streak on this of the spray paint i just didn't move it around enough to get it to do that shimmer you know the pool where the gold pools up at the top shimmer effect really really pretty and so these this particular type of gold and resin absolutely um is a little a lot more controlling you can see where you can do it thin you can do it thick um, blowing it around makes really really good effects and it actually doesn't doesn't come off when you if you were to touch it the next day but it absolutely will <laughs> sand off and here's an example of that i had done this coaster and actually this is the coaster where I learned that. So I had done the coaster and it was in it was in this metallic powder and there had the, the pool the gold had pooled. Let me see if I can get this to go in focus. Gold had pooled in a, in a line across the coaster like this. And then I sanded it. <laughs> and once I sanded it, I lost that beautiful pool gold pooling at the top effect. But I still think it's beautiful. This coaster is beautiful. So this was one of my first um, tries with the um, with the metallic powders. And so this is what would happen, or this is what it would look like if you sanded the top of this right now without putting a clear coat on it. But if you were to just go ahead and, I mean, if this was something you were going to hang on the wall, obviously you don't need to do a clear coat. But on a coaster, you want to be sure that um, that you protect that that particular gold, gold shimmer part, if that's what you're, if that's the look you're going for. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that on when it comes to um, sanding when you're, when you have gold on the top. And here we are on our last. Now this one was the one where we, of course we did the, um, the gilding flakes and this streak is um alcohol ink which to me it's so funny because this is what i would imagine spray paint would look like if you sprayed spray paint across the the top of a hard surface but that was 
that's actually how it looks. And this is just plain, like dropping it on without making any effort to, you know, move it around. I didn't blow it with the heat gun or anything like that. If you blow it with a heat gun, it still looks similar, but you could get, a, you know, a design. If you look at the ends of, or around the edges of this, it's, it's actually a really neat effect. And then of course, this right here was um, the alcohol ink mixed with resin. And then now you, uh, the, the last part of this was the mag the metallic powder, which I tapped on top, just let it go. And if you rub it, it will come up on your finger. So whenever I do something like this, I you, obviously you can't sand that either, but I would put a clear coat on top of it. And an example of my doing that in a coaster is this right here. So I actually tapped the tapped a little bit of the gold on the top of this, and then I, I used I used a spatula to swirl it around. In this light, you can see that gold sparkle better on these. But um, but that's a good example of this effect right here. And anyway, I had such a difficult time when I had first started doing um, resin to figure out what the best golds were to use for for particular looks I was going for. So I would, I was trying a bunch of different ones to tr just to figure out, you know, what I wanted and what I wanted them to do. So I hope this video helps kind of show you the differences or what you can expect to see when you use certain golds. And, um, I also, I will link everything that I used in this video in the, um, comments and, um, so just be aware that I am not specifically saying use particular products. I am just showing you exactly what I have, what I like, what I've used. So if you guys have something that you love and think I should try, let me know and I will I will give it a shot because I would be more than happy to learn new things when it comes to, you know, how we do resin. But anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you soon.